So you must be so confident or to be pitching her into Group 1 company straight after the list of wins. She must be showing you all the right signs at home. Well, you see, you're coming near the end of the season now. And uh, we'll say if it was earlier in the season, I'd probably have tried a Group 2 or 3 on the way. But I mean, um, there was nothing I felt. You know, I felt last Sunday in the Cora was every bit as strong uh, for a Group 3 as the group one was on coming up on Saturday. So yeah. I said, why not race for a hundred grand prize money? You know, and that's the win money now. It's yeah. 200 grand race. So I felt for the equal opposition, I said, why not do it for 200 grand? That's for 40. Yeah, and you see, you see as well with the, the weather seems to be coming in your favor as well. There's, it's soft as of, as of right now over there. Well, Long yeah, well, what I believe, I think she acts on, you know, good yielding. But I think that the, if soft or heavy comes up, it will inconvenience the others and it won't inconvenience us in any way. So it's not that she has to have heavy. I'm quite happy that um, she's equally as good on good yielding. And I believe, but I believe that they are not. Yeah. So I'm hoping that will work in our favour. And the market kind of seems to be talking that way as well. She's into the shortest three to one of a place now, and we're delighted to say we're on eights already. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can tell you, um, Paddy, Kyo, her owner, and his sister Philomena. Whatever about Philomena, Paddy is not shy about telling you when he fancies one. You just have to watch the bet. Yeah. Uh, it's Dave here, Tony. You kind of touched on it already, but. When was the decision kind of made for the the Kadran instead of the, the Cesarovich? Because you got touched off in the Cesarovich last year, so I'm sure you would have liked to have won that. But obviously, you've gone the other route and gone for the the Group One. Well, I tell you, uh, the prize money dropped seriously for the Cesarovich, and she went up sharply in the weights, and she was going to have to carry top weight, and. Uh, like, to meet them with a Phillies allowance in the group one, I would rather do than trying to give a stone and a half away to some good horses in the English society. So, um, I'm not sorry what we've done. Um, I'd love to put that Cesarovich prop and <laughs> put yeah. it right. You know, we got beat a half a length last year. But at the same time, uh, I, I, I think having top weight, uh, it, it just wouldn't be fair to the Phillies. Yeah. Yeah, just just touching on party playbill. Am I wrong in saying that Zoe was bought to replace him? No, uh, we bought. I'd say we bought Zoe around the same week that he was placed in the Cesarovich. Um, Paddy has a, a theory that he, I find them these um, ex-German horses that you know that have raced. Yeah. So and, and we sort of have it in our head to buy one every season, and um, you know then we we uh, get rid of one that maybe or go breeding or whatever you know. So um, I think no matter what party Bravo I would have done, uh, she would have been bought anyway. As we've just bought one in the last couple of days now to um, for next season. And he has to be vetted now, so I can't say what he is until after he's vetted, you know. Yeah. Very good. Tony, it's Tom here. Um, just, I think it's a credit to you. Um, we've seen a few high-profile um, cases of jockey, young jockeys getting jocked off, like Tom Marquand in the in the Derby on English King. You've you've stuck with Jerry Showed, uh, Sheridan. Presumably, you could have had anyone for Saturday who's in France. Um just on the decision to stick with Joey, it's a, it's a credit to you, I think. Well, I think we felt um, it really takes a bit of knowing. She has a funny old action. And uh, I would be afraid that somebody who didn't know would get up on her and think that, you know, she doesn't give you the best feel going to the start. And Joey knows her inside out, so I have no worry that he's not going to decide to himself this one is not moving right because she does that going to the start but the minute the race starts she lights up like the queen I've got to know mm. you know so um, I'm very relaxed about the rider um, pity he can't claim his five pounds <laughs> but 
Yeah. We know they're inside out, and I'd say he's a man ahead of his years. Um, I'd say he definitely is. He looks very good. Um, another another kind of question mark maybe for me around Saturday is, you know, she's done her racing. I was looking at her form in Germany, and I saw she raced as low as seven furlongs up to about a mile three. Uh, you stepped her up and tripped a good bit since she's been here. Um, two two and a half miles. You, is there any question mark around the trip for her? Well, you'll always question. I mean, uh, she won over two one in Galway coming up that very steep hill and quickened well at the end, which gives us confidence. But when you step into the unknown, you know, I mean, there's another three furlongs to go after that. So we believe she'll do it. But the acid test is going to be on Saturday. Yeah, we just just touch on the race while we talk about it. it looks looks as if Neaf Road is not running now. And to me, it only looks like you've just called the wind who was placed second in the last year, the beast. And even on that, like on ratings, you've what, fourteen pounds to find um with with him, but uh, step no, I think no, the, I think he's rated one seventeen, we're rated one oh eight. And we have a three pound allowance. So that brings us up to one eleven. So we have six pounds to find. Oh, the race of is lying to me. <laughs> uh, well, I, I believe that he got his one seventeen rating on better ground. Now he has acted on soft ground. Mm. I don't think he's ever run to that mark on soft ground. No. So no. I believe that his best run on soft ground only brings him to about one oh eight or nine. And I think that puts us level. Yeah, and I, and I, like we probably know what call the wind is now. Like Zoe could, she could keep improving pounds upon pounds going up. Like even if you go through go through a farm, like the horses she beat uh, in the big amateur handicap, like give a Grade One ch- uh, hurdle winner in um, Wave of the Sea, and you have uh, Sharjah who was placed in the champion hurdle behind her, and then you go you go to the Saturday where she beat. Um, a horse that finished second behind Galileo Chrome, who subsequently has gone on to win the Saint Leisure. Like, there's, there's no like, oh, we're taking a chance. Like, she's backing and up everything she's Simon, doing. Yeah, and as Simon was also second in the third in the show, her second, was second in the yeah, third. yeah. So, I mean, her form is there, and Barrington Court acquitted herself very well last Sunday against Don Court, or whatever his name Don is, there, Don. John Patrol, yeah. Uh, John Patrol. And, um, you know, I I think our form is pretty solid from every angle. Yeah, I totally uh, agree. It, it, so, it's uh, Dave right. here. Uh, Dave someone here agreeing again. with the trainer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, like, we're probably, like, we're ratting a raven about always since she won the ladies' derby at the Cora. And, like, we're on a massive price as well for, for Chetland if she goes there. It's uh, Dave yeah. again, Tony. We kind of touched on it, like, Call the Wind looks the one to beat um, at the moment. I would uh, put it down to Nea Frode uh, and Zoe. I, I think she'll beat Call the Wind. Um, in your eyes, what, what is the biggest danger in the race? Uh, there's no doubt it's Call the Wind. There's another um, High Shepherd Al Chili down the bottom, what's her name? Believe Me or something is her name. Uh, just, I can't think of her name, the second... Uh, she's not too bad. Uh, you know, there are good, solid 102, 103 horses. But your man is a standout. You know, yeah. Call the Wind is the horse to beat. He's by Frankel. He's won this race in 18, got beaten a half a length and unlucky last year yeah. in 19. So, like, he is the benchmark. And if we can improve, like I believe we have, we'll give him a race for it. And I, I see then the others, you know, three and four lengths behind that. Very good. I'm so confident right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't think my um, confidence, my my, I'm a, a great dreamer, so I am. So. Oh, you're talking to another one. When, <laughs> when talking talking about dreaming, Tony. Um, when she wins on Saturday, by the sound of this, now I think you've got us all convinced. Um, what's the plan then? Um, we've heard you talk about a hurdling campaign. Are you going to give her a little break or are you going to go straight into hurdling? Oh, she'll definitely 
well, you see, there's, there's two options, you know. If she becomes a Group 1 filly, as much as I would love to go to Cheltenham, um, it could, we, you know, I would sit down with the owners, Paddy and Philomena, and we'll discuss it. I mean, <clears throat> you see, to put her in a Group 1 status changes the whole game. Now, I don't want to preempting what will happen on Saturday, but... You see, there's also the pre-Royal Oak at the end of the month, which is another group one back in Longsham again. And I can't see, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know, it's dangerous to say anything, but we intended to go hurdling, but she surpassed what we believe now, and maybe that might have to change. Tony, that is a bombshell. If you could see us now, it's like you've just burst a balloon in our faces. <laughs> You're, you're talking to three lads who are on her at 66s and 50s for the Mayor's Novice Hurdle. Um, oh, so is Paddy. So he would like to go hurdling. But I mean, we can't be stupid. And always remember, these horses like Max Dynamite beating a short head in a, in a Melbourne Cup wasn't the same over hurdles. Has that bliss who won this race, I'd say, wasn't the same over hurdles. Um, I would imagine Willie's Ledger winner, can't think of his name there, the second, but uh, he wasn't the same over her. So, like, just to say that she stays well and likes off ground doesn't mean that she will be as sharp over her. But, uh, like, we are certainly considering it, and we would, you know, Eddie Kyo, myself, and his sister, Philomene, the three of us are died in the wool Cheltenham people. Yeah. But, you know, we're dealing with a serious model here now, or hopefully she will prove she's a serious model on Saturday. And, uh, you know, yeah. we can't do it with just let her head or her heart rule her head, you know? You could. You could, though, if you wanted to, Tony, you could go for that Cheltenham dream. It's been a while. It's been a while, hasn't it? You'd love another one there. I, I love, sorry. I was, <laughs> I was saying you'd love another Cheltenham winner. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we, 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 I'd love a Cheltenham winner. Um, but the first thing here is the horse. Yeah. And, you know, I'll, I'll do what I believe is right for the horse. And Paddy is always behind uh, what we do. And I, I just don't want to be stupid. I know I don't want hysteria to take over from what would be uh, right for the mayor. Makes so. sense. And... Tony, just something that I wanted to ask you about there was um, you've spoken about it before and it's it's her confirmation. Um, I saw your Faria posted a picture today on on yeah. Twitter and to be honest, I didn't really quite realise just how bad she was. Um, like her confirmation yeah, in front is, of great, is it? It's amazing. Uh, you can see there that she's a little crooked in that picture, but at the same time, there's absolutely no wear and tear on her joints or knees or anything. She's an amazing, um, you know, you, I mean, when horses are as crooked as that, eventually you see wear and tear on the knees and joints. But there's none on her. She's as clean as when she was a yearling. So, um, if while it worried me when I got her first, now that I know her, I don't even look at it. Perfect. That's, that's positive. That's good. Yeah, yeah, but the, you know, we'd always consider that too for going jumping. You know, when you jump with eleven and twelve stone on their back, it does put pressure on joints that flat racing doesn't. So, I don't want to be putting a complete damper on Cheltenham, but I just don't want people going out back in our on till you know anti anti post for the Cheltenham race until let's get Saturday out of the way first anyway. Yeah, and I would her on the side of caution if she proves to be a group one filly uh i wouldn't be going back in her anti-post okay. for, for the jumping race no boy by the way she's a horse for a lifetime whatever she does on saturday she's been a credit to you already yeah well we're we're as excited here uh like santi every day <laughs> <laughs> Just before I let you go, this is a, we're going to do a preview for the arc after this. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to look at it. With the rain and all that, is there anything that stands out to you in that race that you think might be worked back in each way? Well, uh, I'm hearing that um, Love, you know, won't
won't be as effective on very soft ground. And that, to me, just leaves the navel probably the best filly we've seen since the 70s, the days of Valet France and Dahlia and those great fillies. I think a navel is the best we've seen for 30, 40 years. Uh, she'd be my one now. With the ground coming up soft, I, I'd put her down. If Golden gives us a thumbs up, which I'm sure he will, I'd say she's near on a certainty if the ground comes up very soft. I love the I love the boneless area, Tony. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never been shy, but I can tell you one thing: it has cost people money in the past. Ah, uh, like, what harm? Know, that's, that's the nature. Yeah, that's that's the nature of the believe. game. Um, right. So, Tony, you listen. Uh, thanks again for giving us your time uh, this afternoon, and best luck again on Sunday. Saturday. Saturday. Sorry. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, we'll have it all done. And hopefully, before Sunday. Brilliant. Again. Well done, lad. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Tony. Some bombshell.